OK, now let's begin our discussion. Lisa, what were your first reactions to this story of Brook Farm? Well, some of the things they were doing don't seem too different from our lives today. In many countries, education is free, at least for children, and old people receive pensions and don't have to work. Women and men are supposed to receive the same pay for the same work, although that doesn't always happen. But, Professor, didn't you say everyone received the same pay for all work? Yes, that's right, Hector. As I understand it, at Brook Farm, if you were a doctor or a teacher, you would get paid exactly the same as somebody who cleaned the floors or milked the cows. In fact, even the leaders of the association were paid just about the same too. Things certainly aren't like that now. Think how much more company presidents make today compared to clerks in convenience stores, even if they both work just as hard. Well, would you want everyone to be paid the same, regardless of what work they did? I'm not sure. Let me think about that. What about you, Hector? Well, I can see the argument in favour. I mean, everyone has equal rights and the same value as a human being, no matter what their job or education. So therefore, doesn't it make sense for everyone to be paid the same amount for their work? But what about people who are better at what they do than others? If, for example, a farmer is stronger and can work faster, and can grow better vegetables, shouldn't he get more pay for his work or special knowledge? Oh, you mean, in other words, if he's a better competitor, right? Well, see, competition is just what the people who started Brook Farm wanted to eliminate. They thought that the ideal community would be one based on cooperation. But that isn't possible. Human beings are competitive animals. We've... that's how we've managed to survive all these thousands of years. Yes, but that doesn't mean we can't change, though, does it, Lisa? I mean, look at other ways society is different from how it used to be. Can't we eliminate or reduce competition as well? I don't think so. I guess I'm just less of an idealist than you, Hector. Anyhow, what happened to Brook Farm? Well, it's a long story. For the first few years, things went pretty smoothly. I mean, as I said, some members did leave, but other members joined. But then the focus of the group started to move in other directions. And then in 1846, one of the main buildings on the farm burnt down. The association was unable to recover financially and it broke up soon after that. Oh, that's a shame. It would have been nice if it had succeeded. Really? I think it was bound to fail. Society just can't function that way. Well, in any case, regardless of how we feel about that experiment, many of the ideas that inspired the Brook Farmers would continue to be influential in the later half of the 19th century, and in the 20th century too. So, that's what we're going to talk about next week. <laughs>